What's going on you guys, it's PD Fishing and today we're gonna to show you guys an in-depth, a brief in-depth review and uh, tour of my boat. I didn't give you guys um, a good tour of the boat when I first got it, first got it and I kind of just, you know, went off the ropes with it. I really wanted to get on it and start fishing as fast as I could. So here we go. Here's the in-depth review of my boat. Um, we got this boat back in October and uh, I've really loved it ever since. It's been a really good boat and uh, yeah. So I'll show you guys uh, what it is. All right guys, so we are on my boat. This is a Nitro Z18. It is exactly 18 foot, eight inches. So it's actually a longer 18 foot boat, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, let's come up front. We'll start from the front and uh, work our way to the back. So yeah, let's start up front. If you're gonna have a bass boat, you gotta have a trolling motor. If you don't have a trolling motor, then I don't even know how you fish. It's kind of impossible to fish without a trolling motor. So, uh, and uh, yeah, so here we are. This is the Minn Kota Ultrex, 80 pound thrust. Yes, sir. I really like this trolling motor. It's got a little kickstand right here for support. When I'm going places, I pull it up and I move to another spot. It's got a little kickstand right there to support it. And uh, yeah, it's got a big head and a big blade on it. So I can uh, just rip through pads or any kind of grass I need to. Um, it's a 48 inch shaft, so a good length to hold me into places. And uh, it is a spot lock. Got a nice little foot pedal right here. Got the pad on here to get, get the grip on my foot. Got a little dial right here for the speeds. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, got that. And uh, yeah, you just press this little button right there to turn it on. It comes on just like that. And uh, yeah, turn it off, easy just like that and uh, you got the little spot lock button right here and uh, that's my favorite part about trolling motor spot lock you always got to have spot lock and uh, got this nice little hose for it so the wires don't get stepped on or ripped up and then up front for my uh, unit up front is a uh, hummingbird helix 10 generation 2 and uh, I really use I really don't even use it to be honest with you I use it for my like offshore spots like ledge fishing and stuff um, which we're starting to get into right now. Summertime is right now. So uh, yeah, the ledge fishing is gonna be vital and uh, that is vital for ledge fishing lineup on my spots. But the unit itself works, um, nothing wrong with the unit, but the uh, this hummingbird puck up here, this external GPS, which helps me um, line up better on my spots. It just went out for no reason, I don't know why, but um, I don't know, maybe it got water in it or set out in the elements of it raining or something, but it just stopped working. So I got to send it back or just go get a new one. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the unit. Nice little unit right there. And uh, yeah, one of my favorite things about this boat up front wise is the, just the, just how wide it is and how much room you have on the deck. It's, it probably doesn't do any justice on camera, like on the video, but you could probably fit three people on this front deck comfortably. And uh, yeah, it's, I love the beam of these boats. The nitros, they're freaking huge. So you have plenty of room and you're not freaking casting at each other and maybe hooking each other. So uh, yeah, so um, we got, of course we got the straps for the rods. If you wanna hold them, well, I should say strap. Um, there's only one strap, one of the other one's broken. I need to get that one replaced. But we got this one on this left side. And I mean, usually it's just me and my boat anyway, so I don't really have any other rods on that side, but I still need to get that uh, fixed. Um, but yeah, let's show you guys in the compartments of the front deck since we're up here already. As you guys could probably guess, this is my rod locker. It's where I keep all my rods. And there's a light back here, light up my rod locker. So I can see in the mornings when we're blasting off at tournaments and getting ready for tournaments. What I really like about Nitro is they don't have like any specific um, fitments for the rods like dad's boat does where it's like a little elastic band where you cinch it in it has the pipes up front the little pvc pipes that you just uh, put the end of the rods in uh, one thing i really like about nitro is they don't have all that they just give you open uh, compartment you just stack as many rods in there as you want i mean I've, I've already got what one two three four five six seven seven rods in there and i can probably put I don't know, what do you think 20 25 rods easy any reels so and that's 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 on each side once i get to it that's on each side so um yeah one thing i also like a lot about nitro is they're really easy to wire up and i'll show you guys on this side 
but um yeah that's mostly it for yeah that's basically it for that rod locker um let's go to the center right here this is where i keep all my baits and uh as you guys can see somebody spilled freaking garlic scent and the dip for the tails for your lures all over the middle compartment but you know just a little paint job um so yeah as you guys can see i got my handy dandy googan bag in here got all my baits in it got a little uh crankbait and jig box right here or jerk bait or whatever i need stack some boxes in here got a big old compartment little cup holders right there whatever you want to put in your things i was just thinking to myself and, uh, cup holders confuse me inside the box yeah it's kind of weird but um it's very weird. I throw that away. Trash. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. And you can probably put anything up here to hold your baits. But I don't know. I don't have that much baits, so I'm not really worried about it. But uh, yeah, that's for that middle compartment. And here we are onto the other rod locker compartment. Right now, I just use it for like nets and any clothes I just store in here. Also, I got my uh, got the net, as you guys can see. Got the old measuring stick for tournaments. Got my light for tournaments when I need to put it in. Got my floaty, just in case somebody goes overboard. I hope that doesn't happen, but you know, you never know for safety. Um, and yeah, I got the fire extinguisher right there, just in case something catches on fire and I need to blow it out. Hopefully that doesn't happen as well. That would suck, but. Um, yeah, another rod locker as well that you can stack probably 15, 20 rods in. Um, and as I was talking about the nitros and the easiness of wiring stuff up, as you guys can see, if you get under here real close, get under here real close, bro. You can see some wires up under here. It's a little, it's a bunch, there's these wires snap together and it runs all the way down. There's a little opening back here, but you just slide the wires all the way up. And it's not hard on dad's boat, but it definitely is time consuming. It's hard because my boat actually has the uh, the foam in there. Yeah. The expanding foam, so you, can't, you don't even have that space. But I just want to make a little side note. We did not, I repeat, we did not wire that. Yeah, that wasn't us. It would have been much cleaner. Yeah. Had there's some, there's some wires hanging down, but you can re, uh, redo that. You can uh, fix your up, tidy your up. But yeah, that's what that's what's in that. And uh, of course on a bass boat, you gotta have your little uh, plier and scissors holders right here. You got little cup holders as well. As you can see, it's my bait holder instead of my cup holder. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then here we are moving on to the step up to get onto the front deck is the cooler. I need to clean it out. But um, yeah, got the cooler. One thing I really like about Nitro also is that they come with a little trash can in it trash can you just stick in there and throw your baits or and a huge whatever. cooler and yeah i don't know if they can see how deep that is but it's a deep cooler super deep cooler put your sandwiches on the side right there just to keep them cool yep keep them from like getting wet from the ice yep this thing is sick this is and probably one a, of the best features of this boat and it has a drain in the bottom just in case i put ice in there it needs to drain out of course yeah but so change. yeah because that's going to get, hopefully, get nitro. All right, moving to kind of the center of the boat. As you can tell, this is where, you know, where you drive and where you sit down. So uh, I guess we'll start with your side first. Right here, as you guys can see, if I have a co-angler or somebody else that's fishing with me, you got little rod holders right here. Cool thing about these are, these are little rubber, rubber inlets. So the, you know, chances of rot, you know, the, butt, the butts of the rods coming out of that are slim. Uh, Hold them really good. And you got a foot place right here. If you want to just put your feet right here, just in case, so your legs aren't flying everywhere. Uh, also, cool thing about Nitro is they have a giant space, leg space, so you're not cramped up and whoever, whatever the person's bringing with them to fish with you, it's not, you're not getting cramped up. Well, not only that, but so, Nitro has the boat set up to where oh, if yeah. you ever wanted to put in a passenger um, console, all you got to do is unscrew these three things right here and the passenger console snaps right in. Yep, just unscrew it and snap it in. Instead of uh, not being able to do it, got a little oh crap handle right here, if you can see, just in case, you know. Which you're gonna need if you're riding with Parker. Yeah, that's true. 
I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little, I'm a little reckless, but you know, got to get to the spots, bro, before anybody else, you know? I'm not reckless, I'm not reckless. I'm, I'm, I'm a good driver, okay? Promise. All right, moving over here. Um, this is one of my favorite parts of the boat. This little flip up center compartment. Um, just where I keep kind of little miscellaneous things, that but uh, something the previous owner built. Yeah, so it's a little, sh you know, shabby, a little moldy, but yeah, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, you just stick all your phones, anything else you need to put in there to keep them safe, so you're not forgetting things and leaving them in the boat, and flying out. But uh, yeah, over here we got, we have the captain's seat, which anytime you get in this boat. It's gonna be me, I'm the captain, obviously. Um, yeah, got the power switch right here, up and down for the motor. Yeah. Um, nav lights right here. Dimmer, never use that button, don't know what that is. It says dimmer on it, but yeah. And then you got the little key switch right here, off, run, start. Um, my dash unit, it's a Hummingbird Helix 12 Generation 2. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really good unit. It works a lot for me. That's how, I, that's how I scan all the ledges and uh, catch all the fish off the ledges. So, um, yeah, really good unit right there. I really like Hummingbird a lot. I don't know if you guys know that, but one of the reasons I got this boat is because Hummingbird came on it, and uh, me and Dad, since Dad switched to Hummingbird, we have caught a lot more fish, and we're able to, we're able to dis, um, distinguish stuff on the maps and on side scan and down scan, and it's just really clear. They have really good GPS and units. Um, obviously you have your gauges, your RPM, trim, um, water, uh, level, you got your speed. I don't, I don't think even my speedometer works, but it doesn't really matter because it works on my unit. You got, your, you got your fuel gauge, voltage on your battery. If you come over here on these switches, you got your aerator, so that's for the live well. Uh, it's got auto and manual. Uh, you got your recirc, so you just turn that on to recirculate the water in the live well. And then the pump out and gauge valve down here, you just do like a little switch in the live well and uh, you, you can pump out the water on the side of the boat. Um, you got your bilge obviously, um, pump out water just in case you're taking on water and you got your horn. That is so weak. And as you guys can see, obviously you got your little, you know, little transmission switch for the engine. And uh, this is not an automatic. This is what I feel like you call in the boat world a uh, manual because this has a foot pedal. Has a hot foot. Um, I'm short. I think I'm like 5'7". So I got to scoot up in my chair, in my seat to put the hot foot all the way down. But um, it's not terrible. I'd definitely move it forward if I could, which I could. Um, but you know, I really like a boat to have a hot foot. Same thing as driving a car basically. Um, Dad's is automatic. Every time I get in his boat, I kind of throttle it a little bit because I'm used to my boat and I forget his is automatic. But uh, it's also got a pro trim on it. So this little stick trims the motor up and down instead of having to constantly go to the little transmission stick right here and up and down it. But yeah, I like the pro trim a lot because it's easy. Got a nice steering wheel on it. And uh, you guys can see the seats. One thing I really like about Nitro as well is when you sit in the seats, you sit up a lot higher than what you would sit in like a dad's boat, like a Ranger or anything. These things sit really high so you can see um, everything in front of you. Like, I don't even, I don't have to put a little chair under me. I can see right over the dash with these seats and these seats are super daggum comfortable. They kind of hug you. It's like a little kind of bear seat. It hugs you and it's got really nice foam padding in it. So uh, yeah, that's it kind of, that's it for the middle middle part um, and we'll make our way to the back. All right, so here we are on the back of the boat and uh, also you have a lot of standing space back here. Um, I don't really ever fish off the back of the boat, but um, if you needed to, you got a lot of space back here. But uh, this is kind of where the most important thing is, a live well. Start off with a live well. So you got these two little latches right here. If you wanna put something in a live well, you just pull up the latches just like that and uh, yeah, a little side exit. Um, one thing I really like about Nitro as well, um, you're gonna hear me say that a lot because I really love what Nitro does to their boats. So um, as you guys can see, this is the live well. I think this is a 25 gallon live well. You could fact check me on that, but uh, it's, it's somewhere in the 20s. I know it's somewhere in the 20s. 
Um, but uh, yeah, as you guys can see, it's blue and it's really deep. It's one thing I really like about it is that it's really deep. Um, it can hold plenty of fish. Um, I got a little separator divider on there to keep the big fish from the little fish in case I'm in tournaments. Um, keep the big fish on this side, the little fish on that side. Uh, I got all my cold tags in here. Um, but yeah, this thing is sick. It's a deep and uh, this little thing right here, this pumps in water. You, you gotta like push it to the side like that and push it in like that to recirc, uh, for that water to recirculate, for new fresh water to put it in there. But you just kind of pull it out. And when it's pulled out like that, that's when you press the engage valve and it pumps the water out of the live well if you want to do that. But yeah, I really like how deep these things are. It holds a lot of water and keeps those fish lively for those tournaments and you don't really have to worry about the fish being in good care. Cause, uh, tell them about the bubbler. Oh shoot, I forgot. I almost forgot about that. So if you come in here, if you look in the live well really close, uh, the previous owner, these lines right here, the previous owner put an aerator in it. So I have a recirc to recirc the water in, fresh water, and I have an advantage. I have an aerator in there that oxygenates the water and uh, keeps them lively and healthy and uh, make sure they don't die so I don't get penalized in tournaments. So uh, yeah, really cool. And uh, yeah, that's the live well. One thing that Nitro does as well that you don't really see on many other boats is, as you guys can see, these are caps on top of the live well. It lets fresh uh, air in and like, you know, pulls the old air out. So keeps the fresh air in there and uh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Settle. Ventilates, ventilates. Um, all right, we'll move to here. This is just any practical tub. Keep anything in it. Keep your life jacket, tie off ropes, anything like that. You need to do that. And uh, if you need to get to your oil reservoir, just simply lift this right out just like that. And uh, yeah, it's a little dirty in there. But uh, And you see that dirty nastiness. Yep. But uh, yeah, this is where you keep kind of some oil. You know, it is a two stroke, so you got an oil reservoir and that's in the back. So, you know, whenever you need to fill it up, just take this thing out and uh, fill it back up. But yeah, whoever, whoever had this last jankied up the wires, as you can see, the wires are just kind of on the floor right there. So they definitely rigged this thing up weird and bad. Well, just but, didn't clean it. You know, it works. And yeah, they didn't really clean it, so it's really dirty. So uh, yeah. But the cool thing is, if you need to do any maintenance or anything, you just slide the bin right out. Slide it just back in just like that. Super easy. But uh, yeah. Anything you need to put in there? There you go. And this side is literally the same thing. I don't have anything in it right now, but you know, that'll probably change as longer I have it. Same thing, I need to do any maintenance, slide it back out. And uh, also this is where the batteries are. That's where their uh, battery charger's mounted on the wall. If I want to change that, I can easily. And the batteries are right there. So if I want to switch those out, I can easily too. So really cool thing about Nitro, just slide these things out. Um, yeah, so that's it for that one. Also uh, to add on to the rod uh, storage, Got another clip right here that just clips just like that. Put over your rods, make sure they don't go flying out the boat because I like to go fast in this boat and this boat goes fast. So definitely don't want to lose your rods. Um, all right, and that's, that's basically it for the back. And uh, oh, we got one more compartment. This is where all the maintenance stuff happens if you need it. This is where you store all the batteries. So uh, yeah, as you guys can see back here, that's the uh, oil reservoir tank. And I got a bottle of oil just in case. Um, I'm low on the water, I need to fill it up. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good thing about two strokes too. You don't have to do any kind of oil changes or oil maintenance because you add the oil directly to your fuel. So that's cool. Um, I, I, have, I have everything basically running off of this battery right here. It's a big battery. Um, that's a nice battery, where'd you get that? Huh? I got that from your boat. <laughs> yeah, dad was nice enough to give me this uh, battery so I could use it because the other battery that was um, in it, that came in it, was bookie and it kept dying on me. So, yeah, 
I usually, I run everything off this one and run the aerator. This is the aerator right here, 12 volt aerator pump. Power bubbles is what it's called. And uh, I got it strapped in right here because it fell over on me a couple times. Not gonna lie, the battery just kept falling over and I didn't even know it had a strap in there until I saw it. But yeah, definitely gotta keep that thing tight so it doesn't fall down. Um, I run my graphs off of this. I run my, tr no, trolling motors run off of those batteries. But yeah, I run my graphs, the bilge, um, recirc the pumps for the live well, aerator, basically everything except for the trolling motor. Those two batteries over there, those are run on, those run the trolling motor. Um, was it a 24 volt? Yeah, 24 volt system. Yeah, 24 volt system. Um, so yeah. And then that's basically it for this back compartment. Not, not too uh, complicated, pretty simple. Yeah, got two batteries back here for the trolling motor and uh, finish with this sucker. This is the heart of the boat. As you guys saw in my last video, this heart's not pumping, mine's not pumping. But uh, yeah, this is a Mercury. I didn't say it that time. I usually say Mercury. This is a Mercury Pro Excess Optimax. And this is a good years of the Optimaxes. This is an OptiBlow. So everybody that's gonna make fun of me in the comments for getting an Optimax, this is the good years. This is a 2018 Nitro Z18, not the early model Optimaxes, all right? So it's, hopefully this one ain't gonna blow up. But uh, yeah, the other ones are known to blow up, but no, this is a good one. 175 horsepower, um, plenty of horsepower for an 18 foot boat. I usually get about top speed on a just regular days, probably gonna be about 63, 64, that's what I sit. Now, if the wind's blowing with me and I'm going, I can probably hit it. I can, I can, I hit 67 one time. So, you know, pretty sick out of his uh, 18 foot boat. So uh, yeah, it gives me plenty of horsepower, plenty of speed to get to the spots I need to. Um, and yeah, two stroke, two stroke boys. Hit me up in the comments. Four stroke sucks, dad. That's fine. Now two strokes are faster though. Two strokes are faster. They, they require more maintenance, but they're faster um, as you can as you can see I'm gonna hop down here so now we're at the very back of the boat um, and this is the little ski step get back in the boat just in case uh, I don't know maybe I decided it's a boring day of fishing I don't take I don't catch anything and it's like shoot it's so daggum hot outside why don't I just jump in take a swim and you get back in the boat step on the sucker got a little step right here and uh, yeah Got a little handle to hold on to so you don't fall back in. And uh, yeah, don't ever usually take that out. Might this summer, because this summer's supposed to get up in the hundreds, as you guys know in Florida. For any of you guys that are wondering, I'm running a 24 pitch prop Fury, Fury blade, and uh, yeah, three blade. So four blades are better for the um, hole shot, and uh, three blades are better for speed. And I don't really care about hole shot, because this thing, already has a really good hole shot. It gets, gets, on, gets on plane in about probably two or three seconds. So, uh, yeah. So, speed, definitely in tournaments, speed is uh, key. And uh, as you guys can see, obviously, got a little transom saver for the motor. So this thing's not flapping back and forth. Got the uh, buckles, hold it down. And that's basically it. That's my boat, that's my 2018 Nitro Z18 been really happy with it and I'm gonna have this boat for a really long time that's for sure really like the color scheme can't go wrong with the white on black uh, never fails it's a really good color scheme and uh, yeah also the last thing about this I'm gonna talk about is the tandem axle trailer something key thing that's really important when you're towing um, and just for all longevity and being on the road, like if you're traveling a lot, um, it's key to have a tandem axle trailer. It's a lot smoother on the road, especially um, with the truck I got now that, you know, tows the boat better. Uh, don't doesn't even feel like anything's behind me. Um, so, I mean, more money and more maintenance to keep up for the tires and everything, but it's, it's definitely worth it. You got dual, a dual axle and it's gonna ride so much smoother. Um, Dad's got a single axle, he can attest it riding smoother. Of course it's gonna ride smoother. But um, yeah, it's definitely a lot smoother and I like it a lot. And um, yeah, it's kind of weird though. Like, you think, it, you think because it's longer 
It has a dual axle trailer on it. I mean, yours, yours, yours is 18 foot. I think it's the weight. Just the weight. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's probably heavier, isn't it? Well, you, yeah, it's got to be heavier because you, yeah, your hole's a lot wider. Mine is. Yeah. Little gas cap right here. <coughs> right in my face. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. This was a direct, brief walkthrough of my boat and uh, I want to give this to you guys because I didn't really give you guys a walkthrough of it. Kind of just threw it in your faces and it's like, here, got a new boat. And that's kind of it. Didn't give you a walkthrough of it. So yeah, this is a walkthrough of it. Appreciate you guys for watching this video. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers, guys. So if you do a favor for me, I really appreciate it. Go hit that subscribe button and bell notification button so you get notified when I upload. Also hit the like button on this video because it helps me out and it helps the videos. Hit that subscribe button and uh, join the gang. Get us to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And uh, let's build this freaking channel. We're giving away an SLX DC at 2,000 subscribers. So if you guys want a chance to win an SLX DC, we're almost there. We're at 1,600 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. You only need 300 more, 400 more. Um, so uh, yeah, follow our Instagram as well. And that'll get you entered to win the SLX DC. I'm glad I got to show you guys my boat and the in-depth description of the boat. Show you guys what was all in it and what it comes with. Can't wait to see what it looks like in a couple years and uh, compare the videos, but I'm getting out of here. Thank you guys for watching this video as always. And as always, keep slapping them.